do you remember that when we were kids, we were given those painful injections at regular time intervals? Weren't those really scary? But why do we need them? Well, they are meant for the betterment of our health. This process is called vaccination and is performed on babies to help their bodies fight infections. So what exactly are these vaccines? Vaccines are preparations containing microbes that cause the disease against which we are protecting the body. Wait a second, did I say disease causing microbes? How can we inject the body with the same microbes to protect against them? Doesn't that sound weird? Well, actually not. Let me explain. Vaccines contain the weakened or killed forms of these microbes. So is the disease causing microbe killed and injected inside a body? Yes. Sometimes vaccines also contain only a few important parts of the microbes. And what do we mean by this? Parts of microbes can include the outer capsid, the membranes or even microbial toxins at times. So why do we inject these microbial parts in our body? Well, just like we have mock exams before the finals, we give our body an introduction to these microbes. But this is done by injecting our body with only those microbes which lack the capacity of infection. And this is made sure by killing the microbes with heat or chemicals. This prepares our immune system to design a strategy for killing the microbes. The same strategy can be used later when the body encounters the live microorganisms. So this gets us to the first usefulness of microbes. They help us in preparing vaccines. Just like vaccines help to prevent diseases, we have antibiotics that help in curing the diseases. Now as the name suggests, anti means opposite and bios means life. So antibiotics are those chemicals which render life dead. What have antibiotics got to do with microbes by the way? Antibiotics are secreted by the microorganisms. Various bacteria and fungi are known to secrete potentially harmful chemicals towards other organisms growing in their vicinity. Do we know of any such chemical? Yes, we are familiar with the most widely used antibiotic that is the penicillin. This is obtained from a particular group of fungi. Similarly, there are several bacteria and other fungi also that secrete potential antibiotics. These are extracted from the microbes and processed further to manufacture consumable medicines. Thus, another boom of microbes to us is the secretion of antibiotics. Now, this was about the medicinal use. Do we have a similar kind of use of microbes on a commercial scale or even in our daily life? Just think about it. Yes, several important products which we relish on are all because of microbes performing the fermentation process. Fermentation is simply the process of anaerobic respiration by organisms. Thus here, microbes utilize the biomolecules in the food source and convert it to different compounds in the absence of oxygen. It was discovered long back when fruit juices were fermented to make wine and flour was fermented to make bread. However, now we exploit the capacity of several microbes at an industrial level to make all of these commercial products. Can you guess a few products? Alcohol, wine, bread and bakery related stuff, cheese, vinegar are all made with anaerobic fermentation by several microbes like the yeast. Not only commercial products, but many products which we make at home are produced with the help of microbes. Do we use microbes at home as well? Of course, yes. The best example for this includes curd. Among all the bacteria present in milk, a particular type called the lactobacilli are responsible for turning it into curd. So is this it? Or are there any more advantages of microbes around us? There are many actually. Most important one is that they help in cleaning the environment and also add to the fertility of the soil. Yes. When we have organic wastes dumped into the soil, the microbes convert these wastes into extremely useful products. They carry out the beautiful process of decomposition. This process helps to break the larger organic molecules into smaller fragments. The nutrients are thus added to the soil, thereby increasing its fertility as well. 
Another method in which this happens is when certain blue-green algae are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. This also helps increase the soil's quality and fertility. This is how microorganisms serve extremely important functions for us. But are all the microorganisms always good all the time? For that, we need to check the next video. Stay tuned!